Hi, my name is CK, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to assign a third-party drum library to your electronic drum kit. So, let's go. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video. If there's a certain section of information that you're just looking for, please use the chapter guidelines below, and hopefully the answers you're looking for are answered. I am using a Roland electronic drum kit, Logic Pro as my DAW, Get Good Drums as my third-party drum library. You may be using exactly all those things. You may not be using any of those. If you are on a different kit or different software, this tutorial should still give you enough information so that you can properly route your instruments of the third-party drum software to your electronic kit. And this is more for the beginners. We are not sending drum sounds from the drum kit to the computer. We are sending MIDI signals from the drums to the computer. And pretty much what that means is similar to a keyboard, your drums are pretty much like notes of a keyboard at this point. Every drum or cymbal is gonna have a note assigned to it, and then that note is gonna be assigned to an instrument within the drum library. This will make a little bit more sense when we get further into assigning the actual instruments to the pads. You're gonna to need to know where on your drum module and what type of MIDI output you have available. But you're likely gonna see three different kinds. They're either gonna be USB-C, USB-B, and then there's these old school looking circles that was the very OG classic way of sending MIDI out. All these cables you could purchase through Amazon. So you just need to make sure that you have the right kind of MIDI cable that's connecting the module to the computer. Drivers, this is very important. This is something that you will for sure need to install on the computer that you're running your DAW on and planning on hooking the drum kit to. If you do not have a driver, that computer is not gonna know how to recognize that drum kit when it is connected. Drivers are typically available in the support section of any manufacturer's website. Make sure you download the latest version of that, install it, and now your kit will be able to talk to the computer. The drum software itself, like Get Good Drums, is not its own plugin that you could just open in your DAW. You're going to need another plugin called Contact. Contact is free to download. It's available for PC and Mac, and of course, it seamlessly integrates with whichever DAW you're using. I'm gonna show you how to set up a template using contact before we actually start assigning the drums to the pads. So as soon as you purchase your drum kit, download and install contact, you're gonna have a desktop app known as Native Instruments, or Native Access, sorry. And that's where you're gonna put in your serial number and then be able to download the samples. And now, once that's all downloaded and installed, we can then access it with inside of our DAW. I have a completely empty project of Logic Pro open up. This is when we select MIDI. And by selecting MIDI, we're gonna come down here to AU Instruments, Native Instruments. We're gonna to go to Contact 7, which is the latest version. And for our purposes right now, we're just gonna hit the stereo input. And so the first thing that's gonna pop up, it's gonna show you all the instruments that you have installed, like you see here. Now, I'm not a fan of this new version. I prefer it the old way, so I'm just gonna show you a quick workaround if you don't like this view. Click this view right here, select Rack View. Click right over this title, Contact. So I'm gonna go down to the Get Good Drums kit known as One Kit Wonder Architects. So all we do is double click this. And there we go. Now that Get Good Drum kit is available with inside of contact. Now all we have to do is hop over to the drum kit and tell it which cymbals and pads belong where on this drum kit. Let's go. Okay, great. All that's left to do is assign the drum sounds to our pads in front of us. So let's get that going. One quick thing to note, if you are trying to assign drums or cymbals and you're not seeing any notes pop up, nor are you hearing anything, make sure the cable's connected. And if that's not the culprit, then this likely is. Go to this little eye for information and just make sure that the MIDI channel mapping is set to Omni. And without getting too technical about it, Omni is just the best way to go for getting all signals to be free, traveling through the cable, and that makes it more versatile for us to assign. They're not already pre-assigned somewhere. That's pretty much all it means. Here we go. So we'll dive into settings here. And you can see that all these notes 
are MIDI notes, pretty much saying when that note is played or struck, this instrument is going to play. Now, this uh, invasion kit is typically the default kit that's uh, mapped within uh, any of these get good kits. And you'll notice just right here, like the hi-hat is on a tom. So we don't even want to mess with that. This is what we're going to do. We're just going to go up to clear the map. And now everything is completely open and available for us to start assigning. And real quick, the reason that there's two slots available per each instrument is because sometimes we may want to assign multiple notes to one instrument. I'll show you about that in just a quick second. But let's just get started. Hit this little record button, and if it's flashing, that means it's active. It's saying, give me a signal so I know what note is going to make the kick drum go boom. And that's going to be this. So we're going to strike it twice and watch what happens here. So you can hear that we have a kick drum now, and there's only one note assigned because we only need one note from this pad in particular. Kick drum is ready to go. Snare. Now for the hits, we're going to hit the center of the head and the rim. Now that when you are doing either light ghost note work or rim shots, you're getting a snare sound every time. The problem, if you don't assign the rim to the snare hit, if you do a rim shot that's really rimmy, it is not going to play a sound. So it's really important. Now, the Gitka kits, some of them do offer you the ability to have a cross stick like this one does. The way that MIDI is recognizing a cross stick is it knows your hand is on the head and then allows that rim play to know it's a cross stick. So before assigning the cross stick, make sure your hand is on the head. And this does unfortunately only work with a little bit more advanced snare drums with MIDI kits. So you could try it. If it doesn't work, then your kit probably isn't functional for that purpose. So sorry for that. But... um. All right, my hand is on the snare. Contortion work here. All right, it's armed and ready. Now we got a cross stick. That's cool. All right, Tom, this is going to be one where we're actually using two notes, just like the snare. So hit the center of the head and the rim. Now we got Tom. Let's do that for the rest. Head, rim. Cool. Ride symbol. Activated, ready to go. We're going to hit the bell twice. Just one note available for that one. The bow or the bow. I'm sorry, I don't know how the proper way is to say that. I would say probably the bow of the symbol. Uh, so sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, we're just going to hit main, the mostly the main meat of the symbol right here. And now that gets us our just kind of classic ride symbol sound. And then the crash portion is just going to be down on the edge. So now we have bell, bow, or bow and crash. Um, chokes. Let's talk about chokes real quick. So on a typical acoustic kit, you would strike a pad or excuse me, strike a cymbal and then cut that off. And that's how you get that choke sound. It's reversed when it comes to MIDI. Just like the snare drum, we have to give it a clue that we're doing a unique hit on this in particular pad. It's the same for cymbals. To do a choke properly, you would have to hold the cymbal first and then strike it. So therefore, if you're playing live or recording yourself, you would have to grab and then hit it. And that just to me looks a little silly. So what I would always recommend if you're playing and you actually need a cymbal choke, fake it or do it in person. And it you doing this action is not going to stop the cymbal from going. You'll just later change that MIDI note, that one in particular crash, to the choke sound effect. All right, now we have some options for crashes. Um, this is another two zone hit that I'm gonna do just on the bow and on the crash side. And so now we have two notes assigned to that crash symbol. Um, I have two right crash options. I'm just gonna do the, uh, the main right and assign that to this one, bow, crash, okay? And then I usually like to save this guy for a China. Um, so we're gonna go over here to China and hit the bow and the crash. All right, all of our cymbals, all of our drum head components are ready to go. Now, the most complicated part of any E-Kit assignment is gonna be the hi-hat. CC over here is what we're gonna assign first. 
That stands for continuous control. And I just wanted to tell you that. We don't need to go into it. And so what we're going to do is hit the record. And we're just going to gently push down once on our hi-hat pedal. And as you can see, now, every time that we push down, it's recognizing, hey, there's our continuous control. The problem, though, with uh, Get Good Kits and Rolling Kits, we have to invert the CC. So just think of the line being all the way open as your hats being all the way open. And then when I push it down, now it's closed. Um, now what we're going to do is assign more continuous control, and that's going to be actual to the stripe zones that we have inside of the pad. So let's start at the hi-hat here, CC, arm it to record, and we're going to hit the top or the bow, the bow, once. Now hit the edge. We got a working hi-hat. And we can add a few more things that's going to make this a lot better too. First of all, let's add pedal chink. And those pedal chinks uh, get recognized really easily on a more advanced hi-hat. If yours is just the top pad, just go ahead and assign G sharp one. And then you just do that simply by clicking on this right here. And these mean negative. So that's like C sharp negative one. You'll have to scroll all the way down to G sharp one right there. Uh, just trust me, it's going to save you a lot of time. And having that pedal chink, when you don't want the trashiness of the symbol to go on past a certain measure or bar, the pedal chink actually cuts it off. And that'll work for lower grade symbols too. Now, the last thing about the hi-hat. If you notice, if I push hard enough to actually make that CC bar disappear, now we don't have any hi-hat sounds. So we can assign that though. With my foot being pushed all the way down, I'm going to go ahead and do like a uh, tip tight. I like to put on the bow at the top up here. So we're going to activate. All right. And then edge tight, same thing. Keep your foot pressed all the way down. And now we have a hi-hat and a kit that should be working just right for you. And then the very last thing that you want to do after you get all this set up, come over here to save map, hit this, and just hit custom one. Anytime that you open up this drum library, um, if the invasion shows up by default, all you have to do is go over here to load preset and see how there's a star next to custom one. That means we did something to custom one. You click that, and there it is. It's good to go. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial video. I hope that this is very helpful. As always, leave comments below if I happen to gloss over something or you have any further questions and I'll do my best to help answer that for you. And then stay tuned for a future tutorial video where I'm actually gonna walk you through recording and then how I clean up and mix my drums uh, in post for a video to release. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm CK, we'll see you in the next one. He's wandering, he's flying free